you know what? I'm going to have to invest in a decent protractor because this isn't level. Because uh, I've just drawn a line on this piece of paper and uh, used this protractor to go to get a 90 degree angle and then I flipped it and uh, well the lines aren't straight. Let's get going. Hello there I'm Dave and welcome to my workshop. Now then in the last episode I routed this neck pocket and now what I want to do is to shape the end of this neck so that it'll fit in that neck pocket. So let's get on. Before I start I've got a little um, problem to sort out. Now when I cut the frets I cut 21 frets but obviously this piece of uh, walnut was not quite long enough so it didn't leave me with much after the 22nd fret uh, and I needed a bit more so what I've done I've stuck some of the binding on the end and I just need to sand that off just to to level it down a bit I think it's going to look all right but um, yeah something I missed another thing I missed there you go now I come to shaping the end of the neck now there's some things at play here the most important thing is the position of the bolt. Now I attach the neck to the body with a single bolt. And it's important that I get the position of that right because um, I don't want to bust the end of the uh, truss rod in there. So that's marked on there and I've got a template here which matches that. So that template will just go into the, the neck pocket uh, once it's centered on the line. And then I'll drill a hole through there and that will be the point at which I've got to drill the hole for the, the neck bolt. Now the next thing I need to do is to get the angle of the neck here at the end of the neck such that it will go into that slot there and I've got this little template that helps me do that. Now this has got eight millimeters above the body and then the rest goes underneath the body. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to slide it so that this corner here at the top edge there goes against the line, against the 22nd fret. And the, right, so that's got to be lined up with there. That's lined up with the top of the fretboard, like that. And if I can hold it into position long enough just to move just to put a pencil mark in there that's where I've got a cut so there we go now I can repeat the process on the other side line that up with there line that up with the top and then put a line there And also draw a line in there, which I forgot to do on this side. Let's do that. Line that up there. Moved a bit. I'm going to double check all of these measurements. Okay. Now I've just drawn a centre line on the back there again, uh, and this will enable me just to check that everything is in the same position so I've marked that side just there and this side just here and as you can see they're not exactly in the same place so I'm going to draw a line across there so because I'm more confident that I got this one right yeah. And then, let's see if I can sort this one out now. Let's double check this. So that's telling me I should come back a bit to there. So 
sure my measurements aren't absolutely accurate there. Do you know what? I'm going to have to invest in a decent protractor because this isn't level. Because uh, I've just drawn a line on this piece of paper and uh, use this protractor to go to get a 90 degree angle and then I flipped it and uh, well the lines aren't straight. Well on a positive note at least my uh, frets are all in square because that was a little bit of a worry. Anyway okay so um, I've done another line on here so I know now where I'm going to cut. I think the next thing I need to do is get cut in. honest I think I need some form of jig for this I think I'm gonna make one what I've done I've set this mitre saw to 14 degrees I've locked a block of wood in place it's a piece of hardwood so I'm just gonna slice that down at that angle and that'll give me a guide for the saw Okay, let's see if it works. really reasonably good. Now to attempt the equally tricky operation of cutting across the end there and to do that I'm going to use this Japanese pool saw. And finally I'm just going to trim the excess off the end of the neck here, right against that binding. I've got to practice using this Japanese pull saw because I don't know if you notice, but every time I use it, as soon as I, I break through, the top edge smashes down on top of the wood I'm cutting. Now I haven't marked it this time, but in the past I have. I don't know how I get around that, but I'm gonna have to try and practice. Okay, 
So now it's all about trying to get this to fit into the neck pocket. It's been another DIY day and it's uh, getting towards the end of the day. It's getting dark outside. So I'm going to pack up and uh, come back to this another day. It's the thing about guitar making, you know, it's not something that needs to be rushed. Just take your time, enjoy the process. Anyway, I'm going to clear up and I'll be back soon. Good afternoon. Well, spent the fun morning doing a bit of laminate flooring. And I tell you what, bandsaws are great for doing laminate flooring, but my goodness me, doesn't the floor bugger up the blade? This is, this, this is no longer a blade. This is a thing uh, that just burns wood. Um, on the plus side, um, I think I can sharpen it. I've had a go at sharpening a blade before and it seemed to work. So uh, I'll, um, I'll show you how I did that uh, in another video. Anyway, I just wanted to quickly follow up on the uh, sharpening that I did last in the last episode. And um, I was using my stones. Now, the interesting thing about this is, that as, I, as I said at the time, I couldn't remember what the grits were. So I did a bit of research on the internet and I found this set on sale from uh, the US for about, well, the equivalent of 350 pounds. Now, there is no way in this world that I would have paid 350 pounds for a set of these stones. Um, with Carolyn and I were trying to think when I would have bought them. It's probably about 15 to 20 years ago, something like that. So. I don't think inflation is that bad. The most I would have paid is about £50. And I know you can buy them much cheaper than £350. You can buy uh, stones. These days they do sort of stones with two grits on, on each stone. Uh, and they're quite reasonably priced. So I know that that's uh, the case these days. And the other thing was... I knew that this was the coarse grit, that's not a problem, and I knew that this was the finest grit, 7000, and that one is uh, 220, I've actually written it on there now, but these two, now one is actually 4000 uh, 4, grit and the other is 2000 grit, and do you think I can work it out? Now then, we've been looking at this today and I think that I've had it the wrong way round because I've been assuming that this was the 4000 grit but I don't think it is I think this is the 2000 grit so that's what I'm going to plump for and that this is the 4000 grit because it does feel finer I mean obviously there's nothing in it between the two but I think this is a 4000 grit so for the last 20 years, whatever, I've been using these the wrong way around. Now I know. So, thought I'd just bring you up to date with where I am on that. Whatever the case, these stones do a marvellous job in sharpening chisels and plain blades. Anyway, enough of that. I'm now going to get on with uh, fitting the neck. I would say if any of you guys I've got a set of those stones and you know exactly which grits which please let me know in the comments that'd be great okay so now I've got to make this neck fit into that neck pocket let's have a closer look now you'll notice this is rounded and the corners there so the first thing I need to do is to round these corners to match that I'm also going to have to take off some material on the sides just to make this fit but it's a bit of a gradual process so uh, first things first let's get those corners rounded off
that's fitted in, but um, all is not well, unfortunately. Uh, I just need to check this out, the size here. Um, for a start, the, the neck, it, the fretboard here is too high above the body. So it's actually 11 mil and I need it to be eight mil. So I've got to take some more off. Uh, and you can see if I flip it over that I've got a big gap of approximately three or four mil underneath there, which hopefully will close up a bit. Um, I'm going to do something underneath here to tidy up that end anyway. So uh, it doesn't really matter as long as I get this neck down to the body as close as it needs to be. So a little bit more work needs to be done on the end of there. Now I don't know if you suffer with the same problem that I do with vices like this and that is if I tighten this up at this end what happens is the vice closes up at this end and effectively makes that loose or loosens that. And the way I've got round that is by creating some pieces of wood of different thicknesses with a nail in and I just slot those in. I'm going to have to use two here, I think, to get that to about the right depth to hold it at that end. And then when I put this in at this end, it gives even pressure and the thing's held really firm. Okay, let me mark that up now. I apologise, you're seeing this upside down. Uh, I need to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go into the centre there, the highest point, And I'm going to put a mark at 8mm, just there. Now then, that's actually 3mm from the bottom there. So if I measure 3mm from the bottom there, up there and do the same on the other side if I join those lines up should be in business and get it joined up as near as I can okay so I need to take that off okay, I think the Japanese pull saw is the tool for the job That was pretty good. Nice fit underneath. I always managed to cut too much off at the top, but we can sort that out as well. But that looks okay. 
Okay, so that looks like it's fitting reasonably well. I'm just going to prop the guitar up on some uh, blocks. Like that. Now, here's the bridge. Let's get a straight edge. Okay, well the good news is it's pretty flat. Um, I've just propped this end up just to simulate the nut. Uh, this is the bridge and it's not adjusted in any way so it's flat and there's a little gap all the way down. It looks reasonably okay and this is level all the way from the neck there to the, the bridge. That's the good news. The bad news is underneath. Whoops. Now obviously I'd like the strip to line up with the body <laughs> um, and the neck is a bit offset at the moment. Now there's two things I can do here. Well there's three things actually. I could just sort of look away and forget that it ever happened. I'm not going to do that. Right, um, this is a bit ugly at the end. So what I'm thinking of doing anyway is putting some veneer to cover all of that up to make it a, a neater end and I, I may curve that a little bit to make it a little bit more attractive. Bend the veneer round, that, that probably looks okay. I think I'll do that but I'll also think I'm going to move this neck over a little uh, to try and bring it more into line. I don't think I'm going to get it fully into line. Now that's going to have the effect of creating a gap on the top there. I've actually left the binding a little bit thicker. So I think I can probably get away with actually putting a little piece of veneer in there so that it pushes the neck that way and it's not going to show. So that's my approach. Uh, in order to do this, I'm going to have to take a little bit more off this side of the neck pocket. I think I'm going to be okay because this neck is an incredibly tight fit. And in a way, I don't want it too tight because when I put some finish on it, it's going to swell out anyway. So that might be uh, a good thing. So let's see what we can do. Of course this bit here is a bit ugly anyway and um, I think I'm going to have to sand this away, uh, this bit here on the end. So you'll see the, the neck at that point. But um, yeah, I think I'll have a go with a chisel, see if I can just take a little bit off that side. I'm saying chisel but I'm thinking 60 grit sandpaper on this block. It's going to take a while, but at least it's going to be a little bit more accurate, I think. And uh, I have a feeling I might do some damage with a chisel. This is going to take a while. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I've made the adjustment. What I'm going to do now, I've got a couple of pieces of veneer, uh, which um, I'm going to just glue in on the opposite side to push the neck over to the right side. And I've, I think that thickness is just what I need. So let's glue those and leave those to set overnight and then try it in the morning.
That looks okay, I'm going to leave that to set. Well, the veneer has dried overnight, and that looks uh, pretty nice. I've actually just uh, had to do a little bit more sanding, but uh, not too much. So, let's see if we can get this neck to fit. That's quite a nice, a reasonably tight fit. Okay, the proof of the pudding is on the back. And, well, that's looking pretty close now. That's looking pretty close. Well, I think I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead and call it uh, done and dusted for this video. I'm getting to a point now where it's looking like a bass guitar. So, the next step will be to drill the hole for the bolt and to route all the neck up pickup and to route all the neck up pickup. So I think, I think I'm gonna call it, I think I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead and call it done and dusted for this video. It's looking pretty good. It's actually looking a bit more like a bass guitar again. So in the next video, I'm gonna to have to be drilling the hole for the uh, bolt for the neck and doing the pickup cavities. Wow. Anyway, thank you very much again for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe. I'll see you soon.